Uh, one of the lessons I do with my higher level kids is I do expressions. I do idiomatic expressions with them. English is filled with them. There are a lot of expressions. There are expressions that you and I don't even know. And we use different expressions depending on which country we're in. You know, even though England and the U.S., you know, English speaking countries, England has some expressions that we don't use. And it's the same here. We have expressions that they don't use. And I tell my students, you have to know expressions. Some of them complain and say, you know, Mr. This is just too difficult. And I just stress, look, you have to know them. I know it's weird in the beginning. But with practice and patience, you'll understand them, you'll be able to use them. So I like the model. I start with broke. And what I do is I hold up my wallet, which I don't have in my hand, but let's say I do, I hold up my wallet, I take all my money out. And I say to the kids, whatever the amount of money in this wallet is, you can have, it's all yours. So one kid always comes up and I just open it up and I say, I'm broke. Then I follow up with, what does that mean? I'm broke. What does it mean? The kids figure out like, oh, you don't have money. You're poor. You're this, you're that. And I say, very good. Piece of cake. What do you think of when you hear piece of cake? And they think, oh, you know, cake. And I say to them, what if I tell you this class is a piece of cake. What does that sound like to you? Some kids figure out means easy. Some kids think it's difficult and some students don't figure out. And I just explain to them what piece of cake means easy. And I do other ones with them like chill out, you know, to relax, cost an arm and a leg, expensive, two-faced. They like this one. I always have two students come up and I preface with, look, I don't mean what I'm about to say. It's just an example. Please go along with it. This is what a two-faced person looks like. So I'm nice to the student. Like, hey, how are you, Timmy? You know, it's good to see you. Hey, there's a party this weekend. Why don't you come? You'll have a lot of fun. And when... Timmy walks away, I say to other students, isn't Timmy stupid? Oh, I, I, I don't like him, and so on and so forth. And the kids find it funny, and I just say, but that's what a two-faced person's like. And for some reason, I don't know why, that's usually their favorite one. In all the years I've taught that word, you know, starting almost 10 years ago, that word's the old, always the most popular one. They love that one the most. So I would begin with the expressions, ask them questions. Hey, what cl which classes are a piece of cake for you? What classes are not a piece of cake for you? What did you buy last? A new phone, did that cost you an arm and a leg? Oh, you bought um, a new notebook. Uh, does, did that cost you an arm and a leg? Then I always ask, you know, what am I saying? What am I asking? In English, there are multiple ways to say something. And it's important that you understand that you will hear these expressions, you will read them, you will hear them in movies, people will say them to you, you have to know them. Next. I usually have my students write sentences. Unfortunately, I'm not creative with it as I should be, but this time around, I plan to be more creative. In the past, I usually have them write sentences in groups, and I don't care about the grammar. I just say, just show me you understand the word, and you can use it. So, piece of cake, use it in a sentence. Cost an arm and a leg, use it in a sentence. Chill out, use it in a sentence. Two-faced, you have to give me an example. You can't just write... Paul is two-faced. Well, how? What, what, what does that mean? That doesn't show the meaning. You have to show me the meaning. And that's what I usually do. But this class has showed me that I have to do more creative things with the kids, which I will continue with in the next video.